Okay, time for our next interesting function in section 2.2. Now we are going to be looking at f of x equals the sine of pi over x. Okay, and what we're going to be interested in with this particular function is the limit as x approaches zero of that function. So limit as x approaches zero of sine pi over x. So what? Let's find out. Okay, well um, for one thing let's just make a quick note here that this function is undefined at x equals zero. If you tried to plug in x equals zero, um, get a zero in that denominator, uh, not so good. Okay, so this is undefined. Um, so yeah, let's see what our function values are getting close to as we let x get, get close to zero. So we'll do a little table here, kind of like we did with our very first example, and we'll plug in some values to let x get close to zero. Okay. Now, when we are talking close, we mean pretty darn small differences. Um, uh, X value of one, I mean, if you're talking like a huge grand scheme of things, I guess one is pretty close to zero. But as far as our limits go, that's not close enough. Like we got to get down into the hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. That's, that's more the scale we're talking about here. But since we've written down x equals one, let's go ahead and plug that one in, just to get a baseline here. Sine of pi over one, okay, that is the sine of pi. Refresh your trig, everybody. The sine of pi is zero. Okay, now let's get those x values closer to x equals zero. Um, let's bring this in. 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, you know, like we were doing before. All right, and you're going to be plugging these values in, so hopefully you've got a calculator handy. And then, um, of course, remember we've got to approach our x value from both sides, so we've got some values that are a little bit larger than zero. Let's come at, come at it from the other way as well. Um, let's see if we do uh, like, okay, negative one, that's still a little far off there, but eh, we can plug it in. The sine of negative pi, it happens, is also zero. Hmm. Okay, um, eh, let's get closer. 0 0.01, 0 0.001, all right. So there's some values that are approaching x equals zero from both sides. Go ahead and pause your video and go ahead and plug those into the function. See what values come out. Okay, so you're back and you've plugged in those values and what'd you come up with? Well, it should be a lot of the same thing. Um, you should get 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0. Okay. Well, from that, we would kind of assume that the limit is 0. So is the limit 0? Okay. Okay, well, did you try any other numbers other than the ones that I gave to you there? Because this was set up in kind of a tricky way, just saying. Um, if you plugged in something else, even if you did something like 0 0.0011, all right, plug that in really quick, you should get negative 0 0.2817. Okay, so that really just upset our pattern there. Um, if we were thinking the limit was zero, now it's something different. Um, if you plug in some other teeny tiny number very, very close to zero, you could pick whichever one you want. 
Um, I did this one, uh, zero and then four zeros. Zero, 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 two, five, two. I think we would all agree that that number is very close to x equals zero. But the y value, the function value, is 0 0.9922. Okay, so we're getting farther away from what we might have thought the limit was. Um, so is the limit zero? Nope. Okay, so for these problems, when you're plugging in small values or values that are approaching a certain x value, make sure to not stick to one pattern entirely for the most part. Throw in some little oddball number that's still very close to your x value that you're approaching, but doesn't maybe quite fit the pattern. That way you can see if there's going to be any shifts like this. Because what was happening with these previous values is that they were all based on the number 10. Um, so like this being one-tenth. When we plug that into our sine function, okay, we're doing sine of pi over one-tenth, which is really just the sine of 10 pi. If you do that division. Sine of 10 pi is zero, okay? And then like for this 0 0.01, that's one one-hundredth. Okay, so we were actually just finding the sine of 100 pi, which is zero. The sine of 1000 pi here, which is zero. Okay, so we were, we kept hitting the same pattern. That's why all those values were zero. And then that's why these two values let us see that, oh, okay, the limit isn't zero after all, um, since they didn't fit that perfect pattern multiples of pi. All right, so what's actually going on here, if you plug in a few more oddball numbers, a uh, few more entries down here, you'll see that the y values are really just kind of all over the place. Um, they don't seem to settle down, and that's actually exactly what's happening in this problem. The limit as x approaches zero of the sine of pi over x actually also does not exist. It does not exist. Or we sometimes abbreviate this as DNE or does not exist. All right. Yeah, this limit doesn't exist, but it's not for entirely the same reason as the previous problem. All right, remember our previous problem, that uh, unit step Heaviside function, its limit did not exist because we approached two different numbers coming in from different directions. This sine function, it's not even settling down to two different numbers. If you plug in some more values, they're just all over the place. And so what's going on here, <laughs> we'll see that right now. I've plotted this on open graphing calculator. Okay, so here's f of x equals sine pi over x. As we get close to x equals zero, if it'll let me, come on, buddy, zoom in. There, there we go. Okay, so if we zoom in, and there it goes. All right, zoom in and keep an eye on x equals zero. Okay, so we're zooming in. Okay. Let's drag it so we can look at what's going on. Notice how the values are oscillating between negative one and positive one. That's because it's a sine function, but they are oscillating like crazy. Look at that. It's just bouncing back and forth and it's bouncing back and forth faster and faster and faster the closer we get to x equals zero. So if I zoom in again here, it's just going to start looking weird. Um, zoom in. Okay, zoom in. 
All right, you'll see that multiple points, we get those zero values. So those might have been some of the values we were plugging in, 0 0.1, 0 0.01. It keeps uh, intersecting the x-axis there, hitting that y value of zero. But yeah, if we keep zooming in, okay, well, there's no point there, but now there's a bunch of points. And it's just impossible to tell what is going on near x equals zero. This is just oscillating like crazy. And in fact, our textbook calls this wild oscillation. So that is what's going on here. It's moving around too much for us to tell. This is wild oscillation. Okay, so we can't get a limit out of this because the function won't settle down for us. All right, let's draw a little picture here just to remind you of what that graph was looking like. Okay, it was oscillating and then it was oscillating like crazy and then a little slower out here, but yeah, something along those lines. Wild oscillation as x gets close to zero.